Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the sixth and final video in IB Biology Topic 11, Animal Physiology, where we will be looking at early development, the placenta, and parturition. Before watching this video, ensure you watch our previous IB Biology Topic 6 video, where we discuss the formation of a zygote. This video is a direct continuation, starting with the changes that allow the zygote to form a fetus. The early development of a zygote to form a fetus consists of three main stages. Development of the blastocyst, implantation, and early placental development. Let's cover each stage now. Development of the blastocyst begins when the two-cell zygote undergoes mitosis to form a four-cell mass by 48 hours post-fertilization. Successive mitotic divisions are unequal, and combined with cellular migration, this results in the formation of a hollow ball known as a blastocyst. By one week of age, the blastocyst consists of 125 cells, and has been moved to the uterus by the cilia lining the oviduct. By two weeks, the blastocyst is known as an embryo, and has used up the food reserves within the cytoplasm, triggering the zona pellucida to break down. This causes the next stage of early development, implantation. During this process, the embryo sinks into the endometrium to obtain further nutrients. It is important to note that uterus and endometrium can respond appropriately in this scenario due to a hormone called human chorionic gonadotrophin, HCG. It is produced by the embryo and stimulates the corpus luteum to continue to produce progesterone and estrogen, thus maintaining the uterus and preventing normal menstruation. Once large enough, the embryo requires additional support to survive, triggering the next stage, early placental development. During this, the outer layer of the embryo develops finger-like projections on its surface, which penetrate the endometrium, allowing for exchange of food and oxygen with the mother's blood. These projections are the early stages of a structure known as the placenta. By eight to nine weeks post-fertilization, Bone tissue forms, and the embryo is now considered a fetus. Once large enough, the fetus is surrounded in a membrane known as the amniotic sac, which fills with amniotic fluid to protect it from damage. Let's review the stages of early development with a common exam question. Outline the events that occur to form a fetus, after the successful fertilization of an egg and sperm cell. Remembering to include eight phrases for an eight marker question, we could say, the ovum divides by mitosis to form a two cell mass. After further division of mitosis, a hollow ball called a blastocyst forms. By one week post fertilization, there are 125 cells present. The blastocyst has now been moved through the oviduct by cilia. In the uterus, the zona pellucida breaks down and the blastocyst implants into the endometrium becoming an embryo. The outer layer of the embryo forms finger-like projections called the placenta, and by eight to nine weeks, bone is formed and the mass of cells is considered a fetus. So, the fetus is fixed in place and obtaining nutrients from the placenta. But what is that? The placenta is a disc-shaped tissue structure made up of fetal tissues in intimate contact with maternal tissues. It is necessary to exchange nutrients and remove waste products from the fetus to enable growth. A circulatory system in this context is required since an increase in size results in a decrease in surface area to volume ratio, thus decreasing the rate of diffusion, as covered in our IV Biology Topic 1 video series. For your exam, you should draw the structure and explain the function of the placenta in detail. Let's cover this now. On a macroscopic level, the placenta is located between two structures, the maternal uterus and the umbilical cord. The uterus consists of an outer muscular layer, the myometrium, and an inner mucinous layer, the endometrium. The umbilical cord is a tubular structure connecting the fetus and placenta, containing the umbilical artery and vein. Note, these blood vessels travel the opposite way to what you would expect. The umbilical artery transports blood away from the fetus, whilst the vein transports blood towards the fetus. The disc-shaped placenta located between these structures consists of several functional units, 
each consisting of finger-like projections of fetal tissue called placenta or villi. They work to increase surface area and increase in number as fetal demand increases. Within each placental villus, maternal blood flows in the intervillar space, rather than being confined in vessels, whereas fetal blood flows in capillaries close to the villa surface. The cells separating the two are termed the chorion, or placental barrier, and it is selectively permeable and around 5 micrometers wide. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.